Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're well and welcome uh, back or welcome to uh, the Norton, uh, Norton live streams. So this is the fourth in our series of, uh, of six live streams we're holding before the, uh, before the end of the year. So yeah, so yeah, so great. So thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, one of the functions you have uh, on this live stream, which is our uh, subtitles uh, function. So down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little button uh, with CC written on there, which means uh, closed captions. If you actually uh, click on uh, on this button, on the closed captions button, it'll pop up a menu and there'll be a small cog on there where you can actually change the language settings of the subtitles to uh, a language of your of your choice. Not every language is covered. We've uh, selected the the most common language for people attending the live stream today. So if your language isn't covered, uh, uh, do apologise for that. But we can only cater for six different languages on on Microsoft uh, Teams as it stands. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to be together for the next um, 30 to 40 minutes uh, there about seeing how, how things go, how many different products we can go through in that time because we've got quite a, quite a bit to go through today. We've got a couple of different subjects or a couple of different types of materials from, from Norton that we're going to, going to introduce to you uh, today. So uh, I think it's prudent, first of all, we'll go through uh, the a little bit of uh, an agenda that we've got uh, we're going to cover in the next 40 minutes. Uh, today's products are Blaze Rapid Strip, the very famous famous orange uh, stripping material from Norton and then we'll move on to our premium Vortex rapid blend material so two very prominent uh, products that we have in our, po our, our portfolio and real strong sellers and fast moving products. Uh, first of all before we do that we're going to introduce you to the experts so who's going to be talking to, to you today about the, uh, the about the products and then we'll go into some details about the different materials both you know what is the rapid strip material Material. Why is it so good? Uh, where can we use it, etc.? And the same on for the Vortex Rapid Blend. Okay. At the end of that, uh, we're going to have some question and answers. So whilst we are, and whilst you are viewing what we're showing uh, to you today, please, any questions you have, put them in the chat, put them in the questions on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, these questions will be moderated by Robin and published onto the chat so we can all have a quick meeting at the end for uh, five, six, ten, ten minutes, however long it takes, however many questions there are, uh, and come back to you with some answers whilst we're live, uh, we're live on this stream. Okay, so I think it's prudent uh, we give a quick, quick introduction to, uh, to ourselves. So uh, on screen is, is myself, uh, I'm Paul Gray. Uh, I live in Cheshire in England and I'm an application engineer for MRO for the whole of Europe. Uh, a lot of years experience in, in manufacturing and uh, quite a few years of experience in abrasives industry as you can see on the screen there. And now over to my esteemed colleague who's going to join us on the streams here, Robin Cook. He's using a very old photograph of him there, that's at least 20 years ago, but uh, I'm sure he'll dispute it without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, Robin lives, lives in Glasgow in Scotland, pretty big news up in Glasgow at the moment, Robin. Um, he's a senior product manager for, uh, for non-wovens for the whole of Europe and he's also a, a global platform manager for, for the non-woven portfolios too, so we're an extremely important man. 31 years of experience in, in abrasive, so yeah, it's really nice to have Robin on, uh, on board with us today. Hi Robin, how are you doing? Are you there? I'm good, Paul. Thank you very much for that. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us, Robin. That's uh, much appreciated. Okay, so uh, as I said, uh, you, you know who's going to be on there, myself and Robin, talking to you this afternoon. Uh, but what I'd like to do is for, for Robin to give you a quick introduction to our first topic, which is Rapid Strip Blaze, one of his favourite products. Over to you, my friend. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, so hello again, everyone. And uh, just to introduce this product, um, as Paul mentioned, it's one of our uh, highest selling uh, products right now. Uh, it's been introduced for the last seven, eight, nine years, and um, it's been growing strength to strength. So we believe now it's the world number one um, stripping product for removing paint, rust, and scale from uh, metal and any other uh, uh, substrates as well. Also, it works well on wood. Uh, and, uh, and a variety of other materials like stone as well. So this product is, um, as we're mentioning here, uh, kind of, it, it looks very, uh, um, but the reality is um, 
the, the, the product is, is quite gentle acting, so it's not going to remove the metal underneath the layer of uh, paint or rust that you want to remove. It's only going to remove that and then leave the rest of the metal intact. Um, it's a great product in terms of the, the, the blend of ceramic grain that we have in, in, inside it. Um, the grains combined with um, some durable nylon fibers, which gives the, the body and the structure uh, a, a, a great working uh, impact. Uh, also combined with our resin technology as well. So all of those three factors combined make it an excellent uh, product. Uh, next slide, please, Martin. And also, um, as you can see as well, the, the, the products are available in a variety of, of, of different formats. So uh, you can use the, the main product is in a, a depressed center type 27 disc to go on a, an angle grinder. That's probably the most popular one, but we also have it in quick change discs and also in the six and four inch wheels uh, for the applications that you can see on the right hand side. And Paul's going to show a little bit of, uh, of, of the applications in, uh, in a few seconds. But the product is, like we said earlier, it's aggressive, uh, but it's also uh, got the ability to be very, very gentle and, and rapid strip um, is certainly key part of the name because you get to where you want to go very, very quickly. Uh, next slide, please, Martin. OK, next slide there. Uh, there is no more slides, Robin. I know you're into your into your flow there, but uh, we keep try to keep the PowerPoint to a minimum because uh, I know everybody's not here to, to, to read that, even though they're nice and informative. We're here to see some some action as well, right? All right, thank you very much for that, uh, that Robin. Really good uh, good summary of the Rapid Strip product. It's certainly a different product that uh, we see out there in the market. OK, so if we have a look at the, the table by the side of me here, these are all the products we're going to go through in the next, uh, next 40 minutes. As you can see, uh, the Rapid Strip product here, bright orange. It's really, you cannot miss this product. It's, it's, it's almost uh, glow in the dark. It really, uh, it really stands out uh, versus a lot of other abrasives we see in the market. So lots of different formats. We've got that in T27 products. We've got it in uh, spindle mounted wheels like this, uh, uh, flange mounted wheels like the one here. Um, also speed lock discs. So with the SL3 or SL2 button on the back there and also our SL4. OK, we'll show you that a little bit later, how that uh, how that one works. So on to the applications, I think um, one of the one of the main things and one of the main applications for rapid strip is stripping uh, products like rust and that's due to the fact uh, you know it really is well designed for the the carbon steel uh, market and, and the reason I say that is because carbon steel as we all know corrodes quite uh, quite easily so take a, a piece of carbon steel like we have in front of us here it's only been uh, you know cleaned up a little while ago uh, and we didn't protect the surface with anything and you can see very quickly you get uh, a lot of rust that appears on there okay so that's a problem all right that doesn't look very nice for a start and if we try to paint over this uh, rust it's just going to come away the paint's not going to be able to adhere to to, to that surface so simple as that we need to strip it off so it's uh, it's a perfect product for doing that and I'll show you how quickly this can be done with the rapid strip okay let's get that in the in the vise okay so for that I'm going to use because it's a flat surface I'm going to use our t27 uh, rapid strip you can get this in a variety of different sizes 100 mil 115 and 125 and uh, bigger 180 mil if if, uh, if needed uh, and these obviously go on to uh, onto an angle grinder all right uh, check on this also uh, the speed rating it is rated to operate on here it says 12,000 rpm so it's a little bit above the maximum speed of the angle grinder and important to note not every stripping product out in the market is uh, applicable to a full speed angle grinder some of them we see with labels on there of max rpm of 10,000 rpm so really important to note that our product is safe to run at, uh, at the maximum rpm on any fixed speed or variable speed uh, grinder and uh, yeah, really good point to note. So you can pop that on the grinder there, do the flange nut up. Remember, try and reverse the flange every time you do that to make sure you've got the, the flanges the right way around. OK, let's lock that into place. Now I'll turn the power on because I do forget to do that from time to time. Right, Robin? 
Okay, I've got all my safety gear on. I've got my uh, heat proof gloves, uh, flame retardant overalls, safety boots, uh, ear defenders in. And uh, today, uh, to make it easier to talk to you guys uh, and not steam up my, uh, my glasses too much, I'm going to use a, a face mask, which is more than, uh, more than good enough for the job. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is how quickly I can take off this uh, level of rust and the finish we actually get behind it. It'll do it really quickly, but leave a, a very palatable finish, uh, finish behind. Okay, so full speed. This is not a variable speed grinder, 1100 watts, so standard, pretty standard product for the market. So uh, let's see what it does. Okay, over to you, Robin. Thanks, Paul. So as we said earlier, the product is, it, it looks aggressive, but it's just giving that enough pressure. The pole's not putting a lot of pressure on the machine, but it is giving that amount of pressure to remove the scale uh, and the rust on the on the surface. And, and look at that, it's as quick as that just to, to finish the job. You're right, that's why it's called rapid, eh? No, it is, it is super. It, it really is very quick. and. You can see from uh, from you know this kind of finish we had before on a close-up camera there. That's what we were we were looking at before this rusted uh, rusted finish we got here. Uh, straight to that. All right. So that's clean enough to be painted, galvanized, whatever you need to do on that product. And one of the beauties is of the Rapid Strip product is the fact that this finish we've got here. It's uh, yeah, there is a, there is a certain level of scratch there. But we're actually, if we're going to paint or treat it, we need that scratch because that scratch is going to give us a key for the paint to, to adhere to. If you went to a completely flat polished surface, the paint wouldn't stick on. You'd, if you knocked it, the paint would chip away. So with that scratch that the rapid strip leaves behind, it can be painted with no issues or good adhesion and, uh, and that paint will stay there and look, uh, look good for, for a long time to come. So yeah, it's a, it's a, as I say, really quick and versatile uh, product to use. But I'm sure you've all seen the uh, T27 product uh, many times before, but uh, I wanna, uh, I, uh, there is one more thing I need to show you actually, sorry, I was moving on to the next product, but I need to show you also one of the main applications for, for Rapid Strip is on, on a product like this. Again, this is carbon steel and the black surface you see on here is what we call scale. Okay, so this is how carbon steel is generally delivered into any factory that is, is working with carbon steel. And obviously, again, you cannot treat this, you cannot paint over this, uh, this layer, otherwise it will, it will not adhere, it could corrode, etc. So you need to take off all of this carbon before, before we do any other treatments for it, particularly the welding area. All right, this was cleaned in the area where the weld is, but if we're going to do any more work on that, we have to take off this scale. Very hard to do. You can do it with a flat disc or a fibre disc, it will work okay for a certain amount of time, but it will stop working quite quickly because it, it loads. This scale sticks to uh, the surface of, of a product like a, a flat disc such as this. Okay, so it will work really good for a couple of minutes or so, and then it will just stop dead because it's full of the scale that's inside, uh, you know, on the surface here. So uh, better to use the rapid strip, open structure, it can eject all that scale away from the disc because it's operating and you don't get that problems with loading. So real typical application. A lot of people ask me when they see this product, will it remove scale? So uh, let's find out. Yeah, and uh, as Paul's highlighted here again, the product is extremely quick in achieving what you want it to do without damaging, you can see the welded area that he's going also over across. It's not damaging that or removing anything like that. just taking off the scale around about the welded area, which could be crucial if you're working with some uh, precise parts. For example, it might be stencil, or they could be uh, certain contours on the on the surface of your component that you, don't, you want to avoid removing or, 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 or changing the geometry on. Yeah, exactly right, Robin. I, I agree with that. And that's one of, one of the beauties of, of the product is, yeah, the flat areas is one thing, but did you notice I was actually doing the curved edge on here as well? So if you just go into close up there, Martin, if we can. Um, if I used the, the fiber disc or the flat disc on this curve here, I would start to flatten. All right, I put some flat spots in there, but due to the 3D nature of the rapid strip, it doesn't do that. It adapts around the curve and it doesn't dig in. 
takes away the scale really easy, really nicely, but doesn't create any damage that I'm going to see later once the product is uh, painted. So yeah, it's aggressive enough to take off the layer, but it also respects the, uh, the contours of, uh, of the surface of, uh, of the component. So uh, like I say, really, uh, really nice, uh, a versatile product for your angle grinder. Okay. So as we said earlier, we've got a multitude of different uh, products to, to show you. This is the T27 disc for angle grinder, but now we're going to move on to a couple of different products we've got for, for different types of machines. Um, first of all, uh, we're looking at these discs. Uh, so they are smaller, as you can see straight away, than our, our T27 in 125mm, uh, and also different types of attachment methods. Why would we need that, do you think? It's a pretty easy answer. It's all about access. It's all about getting the product into, uh, into areas where we can't get the big tool, like an angle grinder, but we can get uh, smaller tools such as this machine here. Okay, so this is an angle grinder, but a mini angle grinder instead. Okay, so it does essentially exactly the same as we're doing with the, with the big angle grinder over there, but it's just a condensed version for us to enable us to get into more awkward to reach places. Such as this component here, we've got right in front of us. This is a big uh, steel girder. And to get the angle grinder in here, it's going to be quite difficult. It's, the guard is going to be in the way. So if I wanted to get in here and in this channel uh, down here, this tool is absolutely uh, perfect for doing that. So again, proof's in the pudding. Let's show you how it actually uh, it does work. So we'll plug this into the air power. Pop that in. Make sure I'm ready. Safety guard on. So I'm just going to try and again strip in this layers. I'm also going to use the periphery of the disc in the, uh, the radius in, in the side of the uh, the girder here. I think you can see that side better. So I'll concentrate on here to show you how this uh, this product can adapt to uh, all of these different areas that we're we're going for. Again, very thick paint on here as well, antioxidant paint. So it's really uh, really tough to remove. We'll see what job we do. One of the benefits uh, that's highlighted by uh, this particular uh, demonstration is the fact that unlike a lot of other abrasives, you've got the three-dimensional effect of the, uh, of the product. So, so non-wovens, they don't just work on the face, as Paul's using it right now, but they can work on the edge uh, and even the reverse of the wheel when you use this smaller size backup pad. So it's working um, extremely well um, in a tight, very difficult to access area so um, again you've got that big rapid stripping action uh, which is a benefit to a lot of people yeah easy like you say Robin uh, with this and I've chosen this on, on purpose this backing pad I could in fact on the flat areas i have used a, a larger backup pad which will help give us more aggression uh, with the product but I, I like to use a small backup pad like this because then I can use this side of the disc, the periphery of the disc and the flat edge of the disc. So proper 3D product. I can use any area on that product with, without any, uh, any issues. Okay, so again, re really fast and, and efficient at taking that off. I'll show you again a, another component that we see, like uh, this bit of racking here that we've got. Um, you know, from time to time, these get damaged. You can see the rust starting to appear through because the paint uh, has been damaged and all sorts of different angles and channels on here, which makes it very difficult to, to finish with uh, certainly an angle grinder or, or other products. But uh, with the rapid strip on, uh, on this little machine, get it done really, uh, really very quickly. So I'll mount it in at this angle, first of all. So what I want to show you is how it can get into uh, little channels such as this here, okay? I don't know if you can think of another product that's going to be able to get into that channel. I certainly can't, uh, but this product can do it very easily. I'll show you very quickly. So again with this demonstration, quick and easy access into a, a recessed channel with which would be impossible to gain access to with, uh, with a larger tool or with another type of abrasive. Uh, that you know, a one surface sided uh, grinding wheel or, or a flap disc or fiber disc would end up damaging the, uh, the other parts of the, or the other sides of the, uh, the channel. 
always achieve what he wants to do very quickly. Again here, just showing the benefit of the of the wheel, just that, that slight 15 to, to 25 degree angle on it, you're getting the most out of it, uh, a perfect view here, where you can see the quick removal of the paint. Again, those little holes that are drilled into the racking, there's no damage to them, and it's just working fantastically well. Yeah, you can't see any damage on there. All we've done again, making it bright and shiny, just taking off the paint where we would need to uh, need to repaint. But yeah, you can see it's got in that channel really. I'm just trying to get see if I can get it on camera a little bit better. It's got in that channel really well. All stripped uh, stripped down there. Okay, uh, maybe spend a bit more time on this to make it a bit more perfect. But we are limited for for time today because we've got a lot of products to. Uh, uh, to show you. Okay, so uh, yeah, and again, it is available in uh, our SL4 type product, which does actually go on uh, on a straight shaft machine, as we see here. So again, this would be perfect to be using in uh, in areas such as uh, again these channels. So I'll just quickly show you that on the machine if I can wind that in. I'll do it the other way so it's uh, you can see it in the camera a little bit better. I hope. Swap him over. So the SL4, you see this, it's, uh, it's actually got an elongated uh, button on there rather than the small button you see on, on an SL3 type button. Okay, I think you can see that on the camera. So that enables this product or suggests that this product should be used on the periphery rather than on the flat surface. This can be used pretty much anywhere, but when we start to get bigger on the wheel, we need a bigger spindle to give it the strength. Uh, attached with the epoxy inside here and we're going to be using this wheel on the periphery rather than on the on the flat side I've already one mounted one in the tool for us to save a little bit of time here today so We'll get that in and again show you how we can get into this channel uh, along here Yeah, so exactly the same thing again Paul's is showing this, with a different tool this time in a slightly bigger size of wheel again getting that same access one of the big benefits of this particular size of wheel with that fitting and on that machine uh, would be in the automotive aftermarket where people need to get inside uh, a wheel arch so that allows them access the you know the, the, the straight grinder there combined with that that fitting of, of uh, uh, a hundred millimeter four inch wheel uh, allows that great access and again, no problem at all here with the uh, with the, the removal of the paint in, a, in again in a, in a difficult to reach channel. Yeah, it's also uh, quite versatile for paint. Uh, sorry, paint uh, not paint removal for uh, for well cleaning as well, Robin. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay, so so that's a very quick uh, introduction to our to our rapid strip product. I'm, I'm I'm aware of time. We have another uh, another product to show you here to, today. So uh, that's a quick summary of our rapid strip. Open structure, very versatile. Uh, it leaves a great finish, even though it's very aggressive and can take off uh, any surface contaminants such as rust, uh, paint, scale. Uh, no, no issue, and also leaves uh, a good finish for your next step on carbon steel, which is generally going to be some kind of uh, protection, uh, varnish, paint, uh, uh, galvanizing, whatever it may be. This this rapid strip gets the product ready for you uh, before you go to your next step. Okay, right on to our next product today, which is our uh, Vortex Rapid Blend material. I know you've seen this material if you were with us on our last streams. We have introduced this material into T27, but we're going to show you today uh, not just that product, but other products it is available in uh, also and their applications. Again, over to you, Robin, just to give us a brief intro into Rapid Blend uh, Vortex. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so this, uh, the Vortex Rapid Blend, um, we use the name Vortex in there because it contains a special kind of grain. Uh, so it's an engineered grain which uh, allows us to deliver all the benefits of uh, a, a, an aggressive cut, but because it's uh, a collection of, uh, of, of finer grains, the, the, the smaller grain sizes uh, allow uh, to deliver in the same step. Uh, a, a fine finish. So you get all the benefits of uh, a cutting action combined with a, a, a fantastic finish. 
uh, in one step. And it's th this vortex grain is put into uh, what we would call unitized, a compacted uh, nylon fiber structure, uh, which allows for, again, like we saw with the earlier product, um, a great versatility and, and also durability as, as well. Uh, next slide, please, Martin. Uh, and it's available, as Paul mentioned, in a wide variety of different uh, shapes and sizes. So um, in addition to the uh, the Type 27 on the angle grinder, which is again is a very popular, there's all sorts of uh, different configurations in terms of uh, 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 speed lock quick change discs and also wheels and some special wheels for special tools like the fillet weld grinder that you can see on the on the image on the right hand side. Again, this product can be uh, dressed or shaped or chamfered to suit the uh, the component profiles as well. So uh, working very well, not only in portable tools, but on pedestal grinders and bench grinders too, uh, in order for you to shape uh, the wheel to the, the profile of a particular um, for example, a, 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 a turbine blade uh, uh, where you really need to have uh, uh, precise uh, control and, and, and access. So soft and conformable, but also it can be uh, uh, a slightly harder density. So there's soft densities and there's hard densities for this. So uh, it's soft and conformable, but also durable all at the same time. Back over to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Robin. So yeah, as Robin says, it's, it's available in, because it's such a versatile material, it's available in lots of different shapes. T27, which we'll go into very, very shortly, but all of these other shapes, again, speed lock types, uh, rapid uh, blend open structure for soft materials like aluminium, uh, wheels you can put on a pedestal grinder, on a tapered shaft when you're taking the component to uh, the wheel rather than the machine to the component and even uh, spindle mounted wheels for you, the big straight shaft machines we saw earlier. So anywhere where you want to take this product and grind away onto the surface. So you might think, well, you know, is it just a blue version of the rapid strip? Yeah, it's not at all. It's nowhere near as aggressive as rapid strip. And yes, it can be used on carbon steel to give a beautiful finish, but really this product is for blending and finishing of uh, stainless steel or inox. That's really it's uh, where it comes alive or comes into its own with the Vortex technology and, and the type of bonds we're using here it just uh, it, it's uh, the best product on the market for for blending and finishing giving a great finish but still removing a little bit of material so right let's get straight on to the first demo let's have a look how it works on a, a component like this a typical fabrication two pieces of metal joined together by a well all right we see that everywhere but uh, often it looks quite poor because there's been a lot of damage or you can see bits of uh, burn or whatever else um, but I've already removed the weld here um, with a P80 uh, flap disc okay oh so this is a 120 a P120 flap disc so I've removed the weld but now I can see you know you can see lots of different scratch patterns on here which is not so nice all right it doesn't look so good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly blend this whole component so it looks like one uh, one uniform piece uh, just by using this uh, vortex rapid blend on an angle grinder all right so let's mount that in the vise in we go tighten him up okay onto the angle grinder put the power on okay so Again, like Robin says, soft and conformable. You can see it's not, it makes a noise when you're bouncing that on there. I'm going to keep a nice 15 degree angle when I'm using, and I'm just going to use the weight of the machine. I'm not going to push, because there's no point. Let the product do the work. Okay. Okay, so I think you have a quick look at that on the, the close-up camera. Are you still there, Robin? I'm not sure I've lost you. Yeah, I was talking, Paul, been commenting, but I, I was on mute so as to avoid any background noise, but I forgot <laughs> to unmute myself. Oh, Apologies, this, everyone. Is, this, this is the days of Teams. Eh? How many times we have to shout at each other, we're on mute. It's a common error, mate, don't worry. 
Uh, so you can see really quickly, I've taken off that, uh, that uh, you know, mill scale finish and also any, any areas where we had some scratches from the weld are gone. It looks pretty good. All ready for the next stage if you need to, of blending that a bit further to get it uh, even more, uh, you know, nice homogenous uh, finish on that if, uh, if, if it's required. Okay, so Type 27, really versatile. Again, can be used on the, on the, on the edge of the disc as well as on the, on the flat face. Really long lasting product. And again, uh, it's something different. The vortex grain in here really makes a, a big wow factor for, for, for us. Okay, so let's move on to something a, a little bit different. Uh, again, I'm aware of time. We're already half an hour into this and I believe we've only got about 10 minutes left. So we'll try and uh, scoot on a little bit more. We'll use, again, this same mini right angle grinder and we've got uh, again the rapid blend vortex attached already okay so it comes in the form like this with a speed uh, speed lock button on there so an sl3 thread where we can change that out really quickly so if i've worn this disc away i can take that off put the next one on ready to go in no time at all again i'm using a very small backup pad because i'm going to show you about how this product comes alive when it has to get into uh, tight areas such as uh, this product here. I heard Robin talking earlier when he was talking to you about uh, turbine blades. All right, this is a turbine blade and it's made from uh, a high nickel uh, alloy, uh, a high nickel alloy inconel in this time, which is damn hard, really difficult to, to grind. I'm going to get it in the vise here and I'm going to show you one of the typical applications for for this kind of material is deburring all right take it deburring or we call it sharp edge breaking all right so that's talking about going into areas difficult to access where there could be a burr that's been left from the previous grinding or previous uh, machining process so I'm going to show you how this wheel gets in there this is what we call a fir tree root of a turbine blade. This is how this turbine blade actually attaches to the hub when it's inside the jet engine. Very important structural part, I think you'll agree. Um, but you'll see this is a V shape, all right? A little bit difficult to get this 90 degree edge of this, uh, of this wheel, sorry, around this camera, yeah? Difficult to get this 90 degree edge of this wheel into this V that we have inside this material. You can see the pattern on the, on the front there. So how do we sort that out? Well quite simple we have to shape the wheel to adapt to the to this uh, to this area and we can do that very quickly and effectively with something like this it's a dressing stick from uh, our bonded abrasives uh, family of products normally used to dress vitrified grinder wheels but we can use that in here to dress our unitized products as well very quickly and efficiently so let's get the power get the air tool plug him in and we'll give him a quick dress, all right. So not only is the product quite uh, simple and easy to, 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 to perform, but it's also easy as Paul showing to dress the wheel to get a particular uh, shape on it to match that V profile that we can see right in front of us in the camera in there. So pulse forming with a dressing stick that V shape on the wheel to match the profile. Okay, so if we go to the close camera now, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this on the camera there, to be honest with you, but you can see we've now got a, a bit of a shape on the wheel. This is what it looked like before. So a very definite solid uh, 90 degree edge. And now we've got a bit of a sharp edge on there. Yeah, you can see that on there. So we're dressed a 45 degree angle on either side. And that means we can actually get this into this channel and make sure we reach the bottom of the channel and properly deburr and condition this whole uh, whole area. Let's see how that works. But yeah, beautiful uh, example and, and demonstration there of the product being con dressed and conform conforming to the profile of the component. That's perfect. Yeah, if we zoom in, Martin, that's perfect. And uh, yeah, you can see the V shape that's already been formed onto the wheel. One of the major benefits of, uh, of this type of product. Yeah, we can also uh, use it on, a, on an edge like here. I'm not sure we're going to catch that on camera. Maybe if we go to the, the roof camera on the, the, the root of the blade as well, which is all an important part to blend. Again, we can get these products in there with no issue as well. <laughs> 
And that same profile that was formed in, by the dressing technique shown earlier is allowing that uh, uh, into that fillet weld area. So uh, that, that, that's a tough radius to, to get access into, very difficult, but you can see the product bending and shaping toward into that concave uh, section of the turbine blade. And, and the beauty is as well, Robin, you say with that, with that uh, com compressibility and flexibility is that uh, you're not going to damage, you, you're not going to damage this component, which you could do with another kind of abrasive because it's conforming, it's not biting in, it's taking away what it needs to take, only just what it needs to take, but we're not going to produce any, any damage into, uh, into a component, uh, a component such, uh, such as that. Um, one last thing to show you, again, aware of time, uh, it really does go quickly when we're doing these live streams, is uh, uh, a particular product that anybody who works with abrasives or, or metals of any kind will know is difficult to, uh, to work with, and that's aluminium. Okay, it's, it's uh, not a great product to, to for, for us abrasive uh, producing guys because of one thing, it's really sticky. When you grind it, it sticks to the abrasive and stops it working. So it clogs it completely up so that you don't end up with any abrasive grains touching the material anymore and you just slide and it does nothing. Um, we have another product here called Rapid Blend Vortex Open Structure. It's a little bit similar to the Blaze product, uh, as you saw earlier, but it's actually uh, open structures. You can see it's got a lot of holes in there, so it's a cross between the Rapid Strip and the, the, the Rapid Blend Vortex that I was showing you earlier. But on aluminium works really nice okay it's able to take away some materials and avoid loading for longer when compared to other products i'll just show you a, a nice example of on, on on this small component where we're going to try and get this uh, disc into an area where nothing else will reach and whatever else you would use would clog up really quickly so let's get this in the vise tighten him up very popular for automotive and as we know and a lot of other applications well aerospace and everywhere you know everybody's trying to make things lighter uh, and more cost effective to be moving around with transport products because of emissions etc as we're all hearing today Robin in Glasgow right now knows that well with the COP26 on there at the moment so uh, we'll just show you how this does work in, in, the, in the channels. Yes, yeah, so that open structure that Paul mentioned is vital here uh, for, for aluminium and as more and more people turn towards aluminium and, and things like composites of material, the ability to not load or clog up the abrasive tool is vital uh, and you'll see this in a, in a second when Paul turns the, the, the wheel over but it's not affecting the performance at all. Uh, and, and the open structure is just allowing that uh, that, that debris from the aluminium component to 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 be uh, pushed out of the out of the abrasive material. So absolutely no clogging, getting all the benefits that we saw earlier of the of the cut and also the the finish as well. So yeah, Robin, I heard you saying on the camera there. If we could just have a close up, so we use that on the aluminium. Uh, if I was using a standard coated abrasive product, it would be silver by now. Okay, it would be covered in the aluminium where, 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 where the ground, it just sticks to it straight away. But because of the open nature of this product, we're able to eject all of the, all of the, the coating away and it keeps, keeps working. Of course, at some point, everything loads with aluminium. But again, the beauty of this product, if it does that, take a dressing stick, buzz it away, off you go again. Uh, so you've got a fresh fresh product which you cannot do with uh, a conventional abrasive so really versatile products for aluminium finishing stainless finishing where you have to do a little bit of aggression you need to remove a little bit of material you need to do a bit of deburring you need to clean up a bit of a, a welded area take the scratches from a product that have been made by previous processes but uh, really uh, powerful uh, product in our in our range uh, Robin anything else to add to that yeah, I just uh, I, I think, like I said earlier, more and more people turning towards these uh, these materials or working with these materials or fabricating these materials. Yeah. So to have something which won't load up and, and can be used in a wide variety of 
uh, profiles and, and difficult to reach areas and also at the same time not clog is quite an important thing to have in your uh, portfolio. So um, I would urge everybody selling abrasives or wanting to use abrasives to, to think about this product and, and have that available just to make sure that, uh, that, that that competitive advantage that we have is is demonstrated to the, to the end users. Stainless steel is a growing market as well. We're, you know, we're seeing more and more things made of stainless steel out everywhere we look. It's 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 in our homes, it's in our it's in the street, it's in uh, in our office buildings, factories. Stainless steel is is going to be uh, is it is an increasing material, and it will continue to do so. You know, manufacturing tolerances are tighter these days, so these kind of finishing products will will be more and more popular as as, as time goes on. Uh, also important to know that the kind of finish you get from these products, we're looking about sort of 0 0.4, 0 0.5 RA, so pretty fine finishing. And this kind of finishes is quite suitable for particular markets, right, Robin? Yeah, that's an important point, Paul. So the finish level that you get in there uh, really helps speed up the processes. So you can go very quickly from uh, the like the TIG weld removal that you showed earlier on right to a finished state. And with one product to do that instead of three or four uh, or three or four different steps, that's a huge cost saving to the customer. Or the, uh... Yep, you're right, mate. Time's money at the end of the day. And talking about time, well, I think we're coming to the end of uh, end of this live stream. Sorry, it's been a bit of a fast one. We've had a few products to test uh, in the 45 minutes we've been on or 42 minutes we've been on so far today. Um, so just to, for those people that are watching the recorded session of uh, of the live streams, thank you for joining. I hope you can join us later on our future, future live streams. You're, you're more than uh, welcome, but uh, thanks and goodbye.